हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम साइली राठौड़ आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन वीडियो नंबर एट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल मेजरमेंट टेक्निक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द टॉपिक्स विच आर फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट यूनिट एंड द टॉपिक्स आर इसेंशियल्स ऑफ मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स डैम्पिंग सिस्टम्स इट्स वर्किंग एंड इक्वेशंस ओके सो दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट यूनिट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडिंग सम पार्ट ऑफ द सेम टॉपिक दैट इज इसेंशियल्स ऑफ मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन विच वी हैव सीन थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ टॉर्कस एंड द थर्ड टॉर्क दैट इज द डैम्पिंग टॉर्क एंड द सिस्टम वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन टू डिज वीडियो लेक्चर ओके सो मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द टूडेज टॉपिक वी विल हैव द समरी वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर ओके सो इन प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड द डिफ्लेक्टिंग टॉर्क एंड द कंट्रोलिंग टॉर्क ओके इन ऑल टोटल थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ टॉर्क्स आर देयर डिफ्लेक्टिंग कंट्रोलिंग टॉर्क एंड द डैम्पिंग टॉर्क सो टू पॉइंट्स वी हैव कवर्ड येस्टरडे इस लेक्चर नाउ टूडे वी विल सी द डैम्पिंग टॉर्क ओके अगेन वी हैव स्टडीड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर द स्प्रिंग कंट्रोल एंड द ग्रेविटी कंट्रोल दीज टू टाइप्स ऑफ कंट्रोल्स आर यूज इन द कंट्रोलिंग टॉर्क सिस्टम सो स्प्रिंग कंट्रोल विच इज यूज टू प्रोड्यूस द स्ट्रेस बाय यूजिंग द स्प्रिंग एंड इन ग्रेविटी कंट्रोल वी यूज द वेट्स डब्ल्यू वन एंड डब्ल्यू टू विच विल एक्ट अकॉर्डिंगली to form the gravity control on the indicator so this we have studied in previous lecture today we will start with the damping torque okay now what is the main function of damping torque damping torque is given to the system to bring back the moving indicator to the zero okay so if damping torque is not applied on that system the indicator will stay fluctuating on the output whatever is measured previously means in that measuring system so we will see damping torque first point we have already seen that moving system of an instrument will tend to move under the action of deflecting torque but on account of control torque it will try to occupy a position of rest when the two torques are equal and opposite okay means when two torques are equal and opposite the indicator what it will try to do it will try to take the rest position at a particular value on that scale however due to inertia of the moving system the pointer will not come to rest immediately but it will oscillate about its final deflected position as shown in the figure and takes appreciable time to come to steady state okay so if damping torque is not applied the pointer will move from zero to a particular value and it will try to oscillate between that particular values and it will not come back to zero so to overcome this difficulty a damping torque is to be applied is to be developed by using a damping device attached to the moving system so damping device is attached to a moving system which will create the damping torque this we will see one by one by some figures so first we will see the damping torque and its graph the damping torque is proportional to the speed of rotation of the moving system okay so damping torque which is denoted by tv is equals to k d theta by dt where the kv is damping torque constant k is constant and d theta by dt is the speed of rotation of the moving system so what does it show tv is directly proportional to the speed of rotation that is d theta by dt depending upon the degree of damping introduced in the moving system the instrument may have any one of the following conditions as depicted in the above graph okay so there are three conditions of under damping over damping and critically damping 
so on what factor it depends it depends on the degree of damping which is introduced in the moving system means when we introduce a damping device on the instrument it is of three types which one will cause the under damping second will cause the over damping and third will cause the critical critically damping critical damping okay so in this graph you can see three graphs where three different types of damping is shown so first one is under damping where the it shows the oscillations of that at that particular point critically damping is what it starts with a steady state and it moves upward and one is over damped which rises from zero very slowly so this three damping we will see in the next slide just remember that damping torque is directly proportional to the speed of rotation and we had a graph where three types of damping are shown now the three damping torques are under damped condition <coughs> where the response is oscillatory as in the previous figure we have seen the under damped which shows the graph like this so the response is oscillatory in over damped condition the response is sluggish and it rises very slowly from its zero position to final position so in over damped condition you can see here over damped condition the graph rises very slowly from zero to here and the third one that is critically damped condition when the response settles quickly without any oscillation the system is said to be critically damped so this is the third type of damping now how to create this damping the damping torque is produced by different methods like by using the fluid friction air friction eddy current and electromagnetic damping so depending upon that the damping torque is produced here we have listed these four types of damping air friction fluid friction eddy current and electromagnetic damping so we will see this one by one first we will see air friction damping as the name indicates air friction damping is done by using a chamber which is an air chamber and we have used a piston in it in this diagram we can see the air chamber and a piston and the indicator is connected to a pivot okay so in the arrangement shown in above a light aluminum piston is attached to the spindle okay so here this is a spindle and air chamber is connected and a piston is inserted in the air chamber and the spindle it is also connected to the indicator which shows the measurement on the scale so this is the air friction chamber a light aluminum piston is attached to the spindle that carries the pointer and moves with a very little clearance in a rectangular or circular air chamber closed at one end this air chamber is closed at this end and the piston is inserted in that chamber it may be circular or it may be a rectangular chamber so this is about the air friction damping again the cushioning action of the air on the piston damps out the any damps out any tendency of the pointer to oscillate about the final deflected position okay now we know that damping is done to avoid the oscillations of the pointer at its final stage so the cushioning action of that piston in that air chamber so this action means what the cushioning action means this push piston will move and the movement of that piston at this point the cushioning action will create the damping so this is the basic concept of air friction damping this method is not favored these days and the one shown in another figure is preferred okay so air friction damping it is an very old method so it is not used nowadays now we will see the second method that is fluid friction damping as the name shows us that there is some fluid used for the damping process 
in this method a disc or vein is attached to the spindle here in this way the two disc or the veins which are attached to the spindle spindle means what the center point and this system is kept immersed in a pot containing oil of high viscosity in this round pot the oil of high viscosity is kept and the vein or disc system is inserted in it now as the pointer moves the friction between the oil and veins opposes the motion of the pointer and thus necessary damping is provided okay so this is the top view this figure shows us the top view and this figure shows us the front view of the system now these are the discs which are connected to the spindle vertical spindle okay when this spindle will rotate the uh, veins or disc will rotate and it will create a friction between it will create the sorry it will create the friction between oil and the veins opposes the motion of the pointer so motion of that pointer will be opposed by the friction which is caused due to the friction between veins and the oil okay so it will provide the necessary damping to the system this is the fluid friction damping the fluid friction damping method is not suitable for portable instrument why because it contains the oil which is not very comfortable for the users to move from one place to another in general fluid friction damping is not employed in indicating instrument although one can find its use in kelvin electrostatic voltmeter we can use it in kelvin's electrostatic voltmeter but it is not suitable for the portable instruments now the third one is eddy current damping eddy current damping as the concept we know that eddy current how to induce it by cutting the magnetic field of the eddy currents in this figure we can see the eddy current are introduced by cutting the electromagnetic field sorry magnetic field the magnetic field is created here and this magnetic field is cut cutted down by the disc so by using this technique we can induce the eddy current uh, two methods of eddy current damping are generally used in the first method as shown in the figure a thin aluminum or copper disc is attached here the disc is shown which is a thin aluminum or a copper disc which is attached to the moving system and it is allowed to pass between the poles of the permanent magnet here you can see the north pole and the south pole and the disc is passed through this two poles as the pointer moves when the pointer moves from zero to a particular value as the pointer moves from zero to particular value <coughs> the disc will cut across the magnetic field the disc will move towards this direction and it will cut the field magnetic field and erect uh, eddy current will be produced and induced in the disc so how the uh, this is how the eddy current damping is produced these eddy currents react with the field of magnet to produce a force which opposes the motion according to lenz law in this way eddy current damping torque reduces the oscillations of the pointer so these three types of techniques are used to reduce the oscillations of the pointer okay Th this technique is called as the damping process so here we can see up till now what we have studied we have studied the deflecting torque controlling torque and in today's lecture we have studied the damping torque so up till now we have learned about three types of torques deflecting torque controlling torque third one that is damping torque after that controlling torque which uses two types of controls spring control and 
gravity control which we have studied in previous lecture and in today's lecture we have studied with the damping torque and different techniques to induce the damping torque that is air friction then after fluid friction and third one is eddy current damping okay so this is the end of today's video lecture see you with a new topic in the next video lecture of this lecture series so till that thank you keep studying